Have you ever met that one kid who's always bringing his laptop wherever he goes? You know, like to classes, to the library, to bed, and sometimes even to the bathroom. Well, that kid was me. I say because now I'm almost too afraid to look at a computer screen. It all started maybe three months ago when I bought myself a brand new laptop. I didn't buy it from resale, didn't find it on the side of the road with a do not use sign taped to it. I just walked into a store, plunked down my cash, and bought the sucker. And it worked just fine. No strange files, no flashing pop-ups, nothing was out of the ordinary. Hell, even if it had been, I wiped the entire hard drive within a few days to change the OS. I've never been a fan of the, for lack of a better word, tablet-y feel that Windows 8 has. So I swapped it out for some good old-fashioned Windows 7. Again, I got the Windows 7 copy from a reliable source. An old family friend of mine did the whole installation for me. He's always been my go-to guy for computer work, and he didn't let me down this time either. My copy of Windows 7 ran perfectly. I had the full Microsoft Office set, got my internet set up with Chrome, and set about using my laptop. Nothing about it seemed strange, until one day or two or three weeks ago. See, as I was surfing the web, I got a pop-up. Now, someone who stored a lot of important files on my laptop, school projects, some fiction writing that I did, and my iTunes library, to name a few, I was kind of freaked out. It wasn't one of those, you are our millionth visitor, click to claim your free iPad kind of pop-ups. It was the worst kind of pop-up, a a talking one. Your computer is infected with malware, a rather upbeat voice told me. My blood immediately froze. Great, just fucking great. Now I get to deal with the stupid scareware virus. To get rid of it, it would probably require another hard drive wipe, and even if I didn't, my files had already been corrupted. But then the voice continues. That's right. This computer has been infected by some of the shittiest comedy known to man. I wasn't sure how to react. Was the virus messing with me? I watched in fascination as the fake malware report faded away to a white screen. In dark blue block letters, the words Jason and Dan's Comedy Hour popped up. Slowly, my fears were alleviated. It didn't turn out to be a virus so much as a viral marketing plan for some new comedy show. And out of curiosity, I stuck around and watched it. To be perfectly honest, it was pretty funny. The setup was that these two guys, Jason and Dan, ran a goofy talk show. The first sketch I ever saw was them interviewing Batman, who in true Dark Knight Rises form, was almost completely incomprehensible. Of course, here he was also chomping on a cigar and constantly changing the topic back to smoking. I got sucked into it, you know? And before I knew it, I had, an, I had, an, I had finished the entire episode. It concluded with a link to a website that would be hosting a new episode about every week. And I was hooked. Every Friday, a new episode was posted for download, and I was immediately there to watch and save the file. They all followed the similar formula, with them poking fun in movies, celebrities, and pop culture. Both of the characters were interesting as well, and really played off of each other. Jason was a fast talker, his motor mouths prompted him to spout off wisecracks and one-line zingers almost non-stop. Dan, on the other hand, was more laid back and quiet but was always ready with a snarky comment whenever the time came. It was funny, often off the wall absurd and all around fun to watch. Then came the episode that got me where I am today. I got home from classes for the day, grabbed my laptop and logged in. I made a virtual beeline for Jason and Dan's website and found their latest episode. I started it and saved it to my computer and it was called keepemlaughing.wmv. I clicked to start the video and treated myself to yet another great episode, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. They cracked a few jokes, did a few interviews, but something, I don't know, but it felt wrong about the episode. And then it dawns on me, Dan hadn't even said a word. In the middle of their current sketch, which had been them just poking fun at Michael Bay movies, Dan just walked out. Jason seemed to be a bit confused by this, but kept calling for him to come back. Suddenly, he too walks off the screen, still calling after Dan. And then I heard the sound that I've since been trying to wipe from my memory. Jason screams, and it didn't sound fake or forced. This was the real deal. When we saw him next, he was running at a full sprint in front of the camera. His shoulder was oozing red through his shirt. He began to cry, to beg, and above all, scream. He fell to the knees, blubbering like a baby. As Dan suddenly strode back onto the screen, his hands in them was what appeared to be a small knife, the same sword one would use to whittle at wood or skin apples. Without a word, Dan grabbed his partner by the hair, taking a firm grip on it. He then began to repeatedly stab Jason, his blows fast and rapid, 
Jason's screams had risen to a blood-curdling shriek as the knife descended again and again. Streams of crimson began to streak down his face, mixing with the sweat of his brow and the tears of his cheeks. Finally, with a low gurgle, Jason's body fell to the ground. And I was in such a shock, I couldn't tear my gaze from the screen. I, I had... I had at first thought this was some sort of sick joke, a twisted scene of dark comedy just gone horribly wrong. I simply stared at the screen in just silence. Dan turned his face to the camera, and I felt a chill down my spine. His eyes... They were pretty wrong. They weren't glowing red or black soulless voids. They were perfectly calm and normal, and that is what terrifies me. These weren't the eyes of some monster. They were just the eyes of a fellow human being, one who had become a worse monster than my mind could conjure. Dan stares at the camera and speaks two words. Cody Stewart. He knew my name. My jaw dropped in shock. I frantically tried to close the video, but to no avail, my mouse cursor was frozen and motionless. I'm going to ask you a question, he continued. What do you know about magic tricks? I didn't reply. Not much of a talker. Well, let me tell you so, let me tell you a little something. Magic is all about misdirection. You've been staring at the screen for weeks, Cody. Why don't you take a look above it? And my heart skips a beat. Just above my laptop screen, the little green LED light beside my webcam was on. How long had it been on? Had it been recording the whole time? How did it even get turned on anyways? Those thoughts were pushed from my mind as Dan's voice went on. Your name is Cody Stewart. You're roughly 5 feet 6 inches. You have thick black hair and brown eyes. And you live at the street address of 15829 Palm Drive. I threw the laptop to the floor and slammed it the fuck shut. Dan's voice still came from it. I know where you live, Cody. Expect me soon. And at that point, I did the only thing I could think of doing. I grabbed that laptop and began slamming it repeatedly against my desk. I kept smashing it long after the screen and plastic casing had cracked. No, I beat that thing until it split in half. I snatched my phone, called up Dale, who's an old friend of mine, practically screaming into the phone. I tried to explain my plight. And I don't think he actually knew what was happening, but he let me stay with him nonetheless. I've never gone back to that house, and I don't think I can. Needless to say, I don't use computers much any anymore. I very rarely can even be convinced to use a desktop, much less a laptop or tablet, and when I'm forced to use those, I always ensure that I have a piece of tape watching over the webcam. He's still out there. He's still looking for me, and for all I know, he's... still watching me. Well talk about a computer creepypasta with no haunted best files or games. Just what the flying fuck did we come across? <laughs> well, for starters, I have to say it was short and sweet. Usually with this, you deal with creepy stories that you come across some long, overdrawn stuff. And for what it was, it worked out well. Now, we've seen this kind of stuff before, some sort of hacking occurring and shadowy people scoping out and spooking their target, in this case, our protagonist. This, however, was more intense than some of the other stuff that I've read before. Now this is where reality and believability becomes paramount. Again, with any creepypasta, reality is an important, important, important requirement. But especially more so with computer or gaming ones, because they so breathe the requirement of reality. For example, over here, it has to make sense, and it almost did, save for one screw-up, which I'll point out, but I'll tell you why. This makes sense. For example, for a virus to infect your system is incredibly, incredibly plausible. We've all had viruses in the past. There are so many exploits that are commonly known, especially for a very, very popular operating system such as Windows 7. We've all had a virus. Especially on this system, for me at least. At times. Tons of exploits exist, and it's no shock. With a lack of antivirus software, which I'm just assuming there was a lack because it wasn't even mentioned, that this happens to occur. You go on shady places and shady things happen to your computer. Then the site tends to send out one video file each week as an episode or so for their ongoing comedy series, and the user downloads it because they find the show hilarious. And the logistics makes sense, of course. It could be very possible the protagonist didn't even know that there were other people downloading the video file. Maybe there was no hits counter, and ultimately these people are just downloading this file or, well this protagonist of ours, and he's the only viewer of this show who unfortunately paints themselves as the target. Now to the point where the protagonist downloads again this one file and it turns out to have needless gore to it, but again, proper change of pace would truly shock the user, and I'll be honest, if you put yourself in the shoes of the person, if someone on the internet was to give your address out, just blatantly like that, you would no doubt shit the ever-living fuck out of your pants. I know that I would. 
Hell, just thinking about it scares the hell out of me. If there's somebody on the internet who's just so willing to go out there to do something like that, it truly does shock you. So what's the verdict? It's good. And honestly, aside from the fact that having pre-recorded content reply to you, which may just have been coincidence, or this sick bastard having the bravado and confidence to know exactly what the answer and responses from the protagonist would be without any live feed, or maybe they were watching a live feed, but that sure as hell was not <laughs> content that was live for any case. It couldn't have been. It's kind of a shock, and what makes it truly, truly scary is the fact that people like this exist. I know I've said that a whole lot throughout many creepypastas, but our world has billions of people. And if people like John Wayne Gacy can do what they want, who's to say that some film student couldn't have done this kind of stuff? Who's to say somebody in the art of television broadcasting and film production couldn't have decided to pull off a killing or a spookening like this? I'm not even sure if that's a word. But I put it in the script, so I might as well say it. That being said, though, it's an interesting creepypasta with an interesting concept. Although I've seen it before, it was executed just fine over here. And whether a person like this exists, and what their actual intentions are, beats me. Maybe they'll kill the person or just scare them out, and maybe this is how they get their socks off. Or rocks off. I don't know. Maybe both will work. But that being said, this has been another episode of Creepypastas. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. And most importantly, let me know in the comments below what you think about this creepypasta. What would you change, and what would you rate it? Let me know. I'd really like to hear your thoughts. This is me, Mudahar. This has been another episode of Creepypasta as part of Haunted Gaming. I am out.